this. What now? What now? And we get to see something in John chapter 16 from verse 16 to 33. And so let's prepare our hearts to receive from the word of God. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time that you have called us together to hear your word, to listen to you, and to hear from you. We thank you, Jehovah God, because you are our direction. You are our, you are our leading, our guidance. You are indeed the path, the only way in which we may move, we may go into, oh God, and indeed find life, life everlasting. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We worship you. And we praise your holy and mighty name. Speak in us today, Holy Spirit. We wait on you. And indeed, we know you are faithful to minister to us. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Yes, my name is Elias. And I'll be taking you to, through today's service. Um, so yes, we're opening at John chapter 16 from verse 12 to 33. Hope you are there. Let us begin. I have come much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. Verse 13, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. So, so we see that what the Spirit gives us is what Jesus has. And what Jesus has is the Father who has given him. And so this is why we see indeed the triad God, as in the three in one. And so now we continue where Jesus now shares what may be grief to the disciples at that time, but then it will become joy. So, so. And so, um, verse 16 continues of chapter, verse 16 of chapter 16 of the book of the gospel according to John. So, when Jesus went to say, in a little while, you will see me no more, and then after a little while, you will see me. At this, some of the disciples say to one another, what does he mean by saying, in a little while, you will see me no more, and then after a little while, you will see me. And because I am going to the Father, they kept asking, what does it mean by a little while? Mm. We don't understand what he's saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, are you asking one another what I meant when I said in a little while, you will see me no more, and then after a little while, you will see me? Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. Hmm. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. Verse 21. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when a baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that the child is born into the world. So with you now is your time of grief. But I will see you again and you will rejoice. And no one will take away your joy. I feel that in this season, we may have lost so much. And the, the biggest thing I may say we have lost in this time as teenagers, as, as elder people, is that we may have lost something we call peace. And peace comes with something we call joy. And when these two are robbed, what we see is something we call fear. And fear has been the one thing that has been so preached in almost every quarter. Fear, fear, fear. And when fear is preached, something is, take away, is taken away. Hope. And when hope is taken away, joy is taken away. So um, where can we find joy in this time of despair? Where can we find joy in this time where what is being sold most is fear? Where people are making the most money through fear? Where everywhere, everywhere we turn, what is being sold 
the, and the highest bidding is going to fear. So how can we break away from the fear that is being sold and being marketed everywhere now in this time? We have to find joy. And not just any ordinary joy. Not joy that comes from, from uh, going on a trip or speaking with someone. Joy that is everlasting. Joy that cannot be stolen. So, so. so where can we find such a true joy? And this is what we want to see. Not that we have been receiving all this fear, all this, all, any, all this despair. What now? This is what we can receive. This is what we can find that is everlasting. And um, so it has been a time of grieving. It has been a time of loss. Um, I think in this time, I've never had so many, so many people losing their lives around me. And not only because of, of the pandemic, but um, losing their lives because of just any people just sleeping and not waking up. And so many have lost their parents. So, so many have lost their friends, their brothers, their siblings. And um, where can we find hope in this time of despair? Because in the world, the only thing that is being sold is fear. So we cannot hope in the world to give us anything good. So we need something outside this world. So let us now dive in and know, what is that that it can be outside the world, but apparently it has been made near. And um, in verse 22 we see, so with you, yes, even now we may be grieving. Cindy, now is your time of grief. But I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. We have to see him. To receive the joy that we need, we have to see him. That we may rejoice again, we have to see him. For a while, the church has been closed. The friends you used to hang out with, who led you in the things of God, are not as near as they were before. So where did you run to? When you were separated, where did you go? And um, so I want us to see how should we have reacted when we were separated. So, so. And so in verse 22, we see that we need to see him so that we may find joy. And we have to know that his joy is forever. So, so we were separated for a time. Cindy. So, but you you found you are in salvation, but you cannot now you now do not understand what you can do. You keep losing touch with this joy that you used to have when you were together with friends in the church. Um, you kept straying from the word of God. You kept straying from the instruction that used to be given at church. So, where is your redemption? Where can you find the joy? That makes you complete. Hmm? So let us continue and see. Where can we find the joy that makes us complete? Verse 23 continues. In that day, you no longer ask me anything. Very truly I tell you, my father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. <clears throat> Only at the place where we are receiving can we indeed have complete completeness. Can we have the fullness? Because um, if you keep asking from men, they can only give to a certain limit. They can only be there to a certain limit. If you, if you, if you even keep calling your friends when you're in trouble, they can only be there until the call ends, until the credit ends. Then after, the, after that, what now? But there's a friend who stays with you closer than a brother. One who is always attached by your side. And so, um, and he's a friend whom we can ask of anything, of anything, and we will receive. And then, when we have received that what we need, then our joy is made complete. When, when, when we were young, we used to ask our father, 
can you will you buy me a will you buy me a bicycle after nimekuwa number 1 si ndio so you would work hard because of the reward that was to come you you asked for something and that gave you strength to continue si ndio and so when now the gift was given to you you now your joy was made complete because you asked a promise was given now when the promise is now fulfilled now your joy in that particular line is made complete the same same thing happens with the heavenly father when we ask of him when we ask that we may abide in him that we may be close that that he may protect our parents that he may protect our friends that he may keep us safe even in these tough times that he may provide for us when he comes in and provides for you for your family for your friends then indeed our joy is made complete so do you desire joy you have to be now attached to the one who answers anything and everything that you ask him but then how can we come to a place that what that whatever we ask is given to us this is how we come into such an atmosphere such a place this is in verse 25 Um though I have been asking figur- figuratively a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language but will tell you but will tell you plainly about my father in that day you will ask in my name you will ask in my name I am not saying that I will ask the father on your behalf no he says in that day you will ask in Jesus name and this is what he says amazingly He not it is not him who is asking on your behalf no it is the father himself because of his love for you because of his love for you because you loved Christ first and have believed that he came from God how can we receive of God it is when indeed we have now loved Jesus and when we love Jesus his father now loves us and when he loves us it is because we have accepted that Jesus came from God so we have to believe so that we may receive whatever we ask of the father the father will a father will never um, abandon the son particularly god will never abandon his son and if we are connected with the son if we are friends with the son if we are brothers with the son So whatever we ask through Jesus we shall be, we shall receive it because Jesus because the father loves the son so 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 our only hope of receiving anything good is is because because it is because the father loves the son and when we ask of the father through Jesus we will receive everything we have asked for so then how can we be connected to Jesus how can we love him and believe that he came from god what as in because so many times we try we try to, to remain connected with jesus but it always becomes quite hard but then how can we really be connected with him um i love how uh, okay I, i i do a bit of, I, i love how science explains that everything we eat um affects our health for example if we if we do not take enough uh, enough foods with iron we may be affected by anemia if we do not get enough sunlight we may we may be we may be affected by we, we may have a deficiency of vitamin d which may cause other diseases so 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 there's something about our diet there's something about what we consume that affects our bodies and particularly our the health of our bodies so 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 the same same way the eyes are the light of the body if you allow your eyes to see darkness darkness will be in your body if you allow your eyes to see light light will be in your body so 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 what is it we are consuming what is it we are eating because now what we consume is now what manifests in our body sindia so um if you are malnourished if we never eat we will see it in our body there will be a big belly probably because of kwashiorkor um, uh, our eyes will be yellow that may be because of 
jaundice. jaundice. I think it's that Yes. So because of the of the of what we take, it is what it manifests in the way in our body. So, so. so the same same thing happens. What is it we consume? What is it? What is it that we eat? And so um so we have to see and hear him. So, so. And even more so, we have to eat him. But then he resurrected. Cindy, how can we eat Jesus? Plus, we have, we have been told not to eat other men. We, we, we cannot be called to be cannibals. But then, how can we eat of him? So Jesus um, reveals something. Um, some chapters early in the book of John. John chapter, chapter 6 from verse 48. Jesus reveals something that even the Israelites themselves are really, are really shaken by what he says. This is what he says. In verse 48 of chapter 6 of the book of, of the gospel according to John. I am the bread of life. Verse 49. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But, they, but here is a bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Here, the bread is his flesh. Okay? Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Verse 53. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. You have no life in you. Is Jesus calling us to be vampires? Wait, let us hear. Verse 54. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. So, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood Whoever eats the flesh of Jesus and drinks the blood of Jesus remains in Jesus and Jesus remains in them. Just as the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on him will live because of me. This is a bread that came down from heaven. Your sisters ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on, the, on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. Verse 60, on hearing it, many of the disciples said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware of this, he said, does this offend you? Verse 62, then what if you, you see the, the son of man ascending to where he was before? The spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. Here, when Jesus is saying about consuming him, he's speaking in spiritual terms. Because now he says, the spirit gives life, the flesh counts counts for nothing. So, it's, it's not, we're, not, we're not being called to be cannibals. We're not co being called to drink his blood because even, he, even if we wanted to do so, he's already in heaven. So we cannot actually do that. Sindio, then continue. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the spirit and life. So we have to see what he's saying here spiritually. So, our goal right now is to understand how can we remain in him and he in us. We have to eat of him and to drink of him. And so John reveals what Jesus means in John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And it continues. Um, he was with God in verse 2. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing that was made, that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. So, we see in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. See verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. So, the word became flesh. How can we eat of the flesh? We have to understand the flesh signifies the word. 
Sawa, sawa. So how can we eat of the flesh of Christ? We have to consume his word. We have to eat up his word. Sawa, sawa. We have to actually take up his word and eat of it. And um, as it continues, so what John was, what Jesus was saying was like something we call a cipher. It was, it had to be deciphered. And John actually lifts that up and shows us, indeed, it was the word that became flesh. So we can consume the flesh by consuming the word of God. So indeed, when we consume the word of God, we are now changed in character. We now can persevere through trouble because something, because of something is said as we continue in John chapter 16. And um, how can we drink of his blood? Um, that particular part, I have not quite understood what it means. But I can say, when Jesus says that, come to me, you who are hungry, and you, you, hung, you who hunger and thirst, and I will, you will be filled with righteousness. I see the thirst being quenched by the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is now, okay, um, I can say, um, this, is, this is the way I see it. Um, there's a time Moses was told to, okay, the, the Israelites grumbled before Moses, seeking for water because they were thirsty. And God told Moses, go to this rock, speak to it, and water will flow from it. So Moses disobeyed and went and struck the rock. But if he went and actually spoke to it, I want us to see the word went forth. Okay, let's let assume he spoke to it. The word would have gone forth. So, so. And the word goes, hits the rock, and water flows out. Then the Bible says, as well as the Bible says that out of the man shall be, out of your spirit shall ever living waters flow from their belly shall ever living waters flow. And the ever living waters are the spirit of God. So when we consume the word of God, it causes a, a breaking within us. It breaks the hardness within us. And when that rock, that, that hardness as rock is broken by the word, something comes out. Water, ever living waters, which signifies the spirit of God. And it is so amazing how the, the spirit, the ever living waters are, are said to be located at the belly. And in the belly, it is where we consume food and it stays there. So, so, so there is something that is there about consuming. What we consume is what we beget, is what that comes out of us. So, so. And so the, the question is, what now? What can we do now? How can we change our fortunes? How can we change how our life is? We have to eat of his body and drink of his blood so that he may indeed be, he will indeed be in us. Then, when he is in us, we will know him and then we will be able to love him. So, so we cannot love whom we do not know. So, when, when we consume his blood and eat of his, of his word, we will know him and indeed we will be able to love him. Then when that has happened, we will now, the father will also now know us and indeed his love will be upon us. And so whatever we ask in the name of Jesus, we will be able to receive because the father loves us. Um, Turning back to chapter 16. Um, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. It was, oh, yeah. Let me get to it. Chapter 16, um, in, verse, in verse, verse 26. In that day you will ask in my name. I'm not saying that I will, I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you. Because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. 
Verse 29 says, Then Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Verse 31, Do you now believe? Jesus replied. Verse 32, A time is coming and in fact has come when you will be scattered, each of you to your own home. In this time, the time has come. And in fact, it has come. Where for a short while, we have been scattered, each to his own home. As in this season, I feel that we may be, have, we, we were scattered as a church, each to his own home. So, for those whose families were able to understand the times and really build up a fellowship within them. If you were there, well and good, you were safe. But there are others whose families never understood, never even knew who Jesus was. And indeed, you were scattered. Um, but Jesus says, you will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone for my father is with me me. At that time, you may, be, you may have felt that you, like you were left alone because your family is not, um, does not quite understand the, the reality of Christ. And so you, le- you felt as if you were left alone because you are now not able to be connected with your fellow, believers, with your fellow brothers in, in the church. And so indeed, you are scattered and maybe you may have strayed away. But even though you may feel like you are left alone, Jesus reveals something amazing. He was never alone. The Father was with him. So, for you, if you are with Christ, you are never left alone. We may, be, we may have been scattered, each to his own home. But with Christ, you are never alone. You are never forsaken. Christ was always there. Christ is always there. So it's up to you to really come out from the bubble of fear and regret and, and, and that loneliness and now reach out and receive the gift of Christ. And the gift of Christ is true comfort, true joy, complete joy where you are never alone. Even though you may stand, even though you may be in your own home, alone. Actually, you are not alone. Because the the disciples would have asked, where is the father? Because they do not see him. But Jesus would see him. So, others may not see the Jesus that you see. Others may not see as you see. And so you may feel alone, but you are never alone. So, how can we conclude all of these things? Um, How can we get back to where we are supposed to be. So, the only way we can do that is to look unto the cross. Because at the cross is where the curtain was torn. The curtain of the temple. The curtain that hindered us from now gearing into the spiritual. Into gaining access to where God is. Jesus already was the way. He is the only way to the Father. He was the only way. So how can we find the way? It is at the cross. Because at the cross is where everything was shifted. It is where everything was finished. Where we can now enter into the kingdom of God. Where we can now receive from the goodness of God. Where indeed we can now have access into the divine. Into the supernatural things. And... So, at the cross is where everything was opened up. Where your sins were taken away. Though red as scarlet, you, they were made, you were made white as snow. And now being made white as snow, you can now approach the Father with boldness. You can now approach the throne of grace with boldness. Because of the work that Jesus did at the cross. So, what now with these days of despair, of fear, 
of regret of the things we have missed or, 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 or the things we could have done. What now? How can we respond to these days of adversity? To these days of pain and, and sorrow? We have to turn our minds from the wisdom that we have, from what we see the people doing. We have to turn our minds to the cross. And what is in the cross? At the cross, there is power. And what is the power? And what is this power that is at the cross? It is in verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Hmm. Do you desire peace within your mind? Here is the answer. Here is the power that was given to us, to me and to you at the cross. I have told you this thing so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but be joyful, but take heart, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. In him is the only salvation. In him is the only redemption you need. In him is the only hope and joy you can find. In this world, you will find trouble, you will find tribulation, but only in Christ can you overcome. Only in Christ will you overcome. And so turn to him, turn to the cross, and find salvation for your soul. And so we thank you, Jesus, for your grace, for your love, and for your mercy. You are always with us. You never leave us. Neither do you forsake us. And in you, you have assured us that you have overcome the world. And by you, can we overcome the world? Can we be indeed be valiant in these days, O God? Almighty Father, awaken us to your reality. Awaken us to understand who you are, and all that you've called us to be, O oh God. Awaken us to understand that in you, we can have everything we ask for. And in asking and in the receiving, can we find a full joy, complete joy, O oh God. Because indeed we have received, O oh God, of all the things we have asked for. But only all these things, we can only receive them when we have known you, when we have been able to reach out to you, O oh Jehovah God. Indeed, lead us to the place where we can consume your word, to eat of your flesh, and to drink of your blood, and to stand indeed in your Holy Spirit. You are our strength, our might, our hope. You are our everything. Indeed, O oh Lord, you are good, and always you will be good, and our hope can rest in you. Our trust can rest in you. You are faithful. You are gracious. You are awesome. We thank you, Lord, and we magnify your name. May you lead us, O God. Indeed, help us, O God. Turn away from the fear, for you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. There is love, there is power, and there is a sound mind. O God, we desire these things. May we discern them, may we pursue them, and may we receive all these, all these wonderful gifts that you have given unto us in this time and in this age through your Holy Spirit. We thank you. And we praise your holy and mighty name. Amen.